And welcome back to A Closer Look. My guest is Renee Rogers, the curator of uh, the exhibits for Birthplace of Country Music in Bristol. Uh, just a fantastic place to be. I, I was very am amazed at uh, my visit there and all that there is to see. You've got two floors just yeah. loaded with things. And I think, you know, people, they come in and they don't expect it to be quite what it is and then they leave just really happy with the experience that they've had. Oh, absolutely. You know, we were talking about uh, children and getting kids involved mm -hmm. in programs there. And I know getting them started early on in musical instruments and that sort of thing kind of develops them. It does. And yes. their life expectancies on to their, you know, older ages that they can sit around and enjoy memories. Well, that and, you know, music is a great way to interact with people. So, yeah. and, you know, it's it, that creativity is also a good learning tool. So there's a lot that you learn in music that's beyond the music itself, so. Right. Now you, you all have, even during the, the summer months, you have a, a summer camps that, that really help promote this. We do, they're called our pick along summer camps and we um, do usually beginners and intermediate sessions. And it's a way for kids who've never picked up, I mean, you don't have to have been, right. have any familiarity with the, the instrument during the beginner sessions, but they get to pick the instrument that they're interested in, the stringed instrument, it's usually banjo, guitar, um, or fiddle, mm -hmm. and then you spend a week sort of immersing yourself in learning about it and learning how to play with others. And But it's not just about learning to play, it's also understanding about the music and learning a bit about the history and all sorts of other fun activities. You know, we've just, we've had those back in July and they were such fun and eat, at the end of each week we got to see a performance by the kids and they also were busking in downtown Bristol so they were performing oh. for people like out at Blackbird Bakery and for the kids it was really thrilling I think. And it's great I guess when you see a, a child come in and then the progress that's made in just that week's time. Oh yeah I mean it's amazing I mean it's more than I could do for sure <laughs> so I'm very impressed and just the fact that they've got this love you can see that they're having a lot of fun with it that there's a lot of joy in it for them and mm -hmm. That's the best thing to see. Oh, absolutely. And then you've got the film screening that's coming up uh, on August 31st. Talk yes. about that. Yeah, and this is another bit of programming that's related to the Things Come Apart exhibit. It's a film screening of a, of a documentary called Note by Note, The Making of Steinway L1037. So it's basically looking at the building of a Steinway piano from cutting down the tree that provided the wood to the concert stage at the end. So just going through the whole process. So again, that's a really great fit for the Things Come Apart exhibit because it's sort of looking at the way something is made, the functionality of all its parts and all of its components, all the way to the end when it's this amazing instrument being used to play this beautiful music. Yeah, because it, it would have to be very shocking to see where something starts from a tree. <laughs> yeah and then go all the way to the end to the music that comes out of the sounds that come out of that well, piano. Yeah, and you know, I think we're so used to these finished products. Most of mm -hmm. us are not makers ourselves, you know. Absolutely. And so understanding all the work and the craftsmanship and the expertise that goes into that, I think that's really interesting. Very much so, and that's coming up on August 31st, and uh, that's gonna be at 6 p.m. It is, and that's a free and open to the public event. And then Museum Day Live, that's uh, September 23rd. That's going on all day long. It is, yep. It's our full open hours, and that's in conjunction with the Smithsonian Magazine. It's something that they do throughout the country, and museums can participate. And basically, it's, you want, it's inspired by the Smithsonian, which is a free museum. Mm -hmm. And you open up your doors for free to the public that day. All they have to do, all the public has to do is download the Museum Day Live ticket from the Museum Day Live website, which is really easy. Um, and it just means that you get free admission to the museum, but also because it's still during Things Come Apart, we'll be doing a little bit of programming that day. So we'll be screening American Experience Tesla, which is a, a movie about, an, a documentary about the inventor Tesla. Okay. Um, but we'll also probably be doing a couple of other activities that day too, so there'll be a lot going on. So it's gonna be a really a jam-packed day. Oh, we always sure. get a lot of people in the, through the museum doors that day, All which right. is great. Now, you seem to have a real good relationship with Smithsonian. Is, is that something that you all develop early on? Yeah, I mean, so we're a Smithsonian affiliate museum. So that's something that happened before the museum even opened. We, we applied to become an affiliate, we were mm -hmm. accepted. And so that relationship started early. And we were very fortunate that we even got some of the, some resources that we were able to bring to our community. For instance, the Youth Captures the Cosmos program that we ha had several years ago before the museum even opened. Um, but it just means that, you know, you've got this wonderful 
institution mm -hmm. um, behind you who's interested in what you're doing, who's helping to promote what you're doing. For instance, they've been sort of sharing all the things that we're putting up on Facebook about things come apart. Um, but you also have that recognition of the Smithsonian, and you know that you're going to be bringing these wonderful resources to your community. And when you don't live near DC, for our community, that's a pretty important and wonderful thing. And I'm sure that you find so many guests from out of the area that come by just to see the museum. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's become a destination, which is wonderful. I mean, downtown Bristol in general has become right. a destination. And, you know, we have people who are planning their vacations around visiting the museum. A lot of people who are interested in country music specifically, who are interested in doing museums specifically, but also with people who do like the whole Crooked Road, for instance, right. or, or follow the Sunnyside Trail in Tennessee. And, and we're one of the music venues that they're really interested in seeing. And I'm sure with, with Rhythm and Roots coming into town, that that gives a lot of people that wouldn't normally get a chance to see that to come by and, and view it and look at it. They do, and you know, during the festival, we, we have a lot of people through the doors, but a lot of people wait till they either come a bit early to the museum, right. because obviously the festival is jam packed and there's a lot going on, but we always um, see a lot of people come through the doors who, like you said, haven't been there before, and it's a great opportunity to, to extend their visit and dig a bit deeper into the music that they've just been listening to out there on the streets in downtown Bristol. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Now September 9th, you've got the uh, Songs Come Apart. What is that event? So that's um, one, another program to do with Things Come Apart. Um, you can hear it in the title. Um, yeah. And the idea behind that is we have Ed Snodderly, the songwriter Ed Snodderly there, and he's gonna dig deep, pick one of his songs and sort of take it apart, sort of sh do a workshop on how he came up with the lyrics, the thought process be behind songwriting, what he was thinking about when he was creating that song. But also the members of the audience can sort of bring a song of their own and sort of workshop it a little bit and sort of think about those things and maybe get a little bit further with that song so that it's something that they're willing to perform later down the line. Well, I'm sure people, you know, even myself, I, I become so amazed with songwriters and oh, how yeah. they come up with the lyrics and then they put the, the, the sound to the lyrics and, and come up. And I guess that's a great way for people to really come in and see how it is from ground to finish. Yeah, because I think, you know, for some people, something that starts out one way might end up very different by the time you've thought about it and dug a bit right. deeper and seen how it works with the music. You know, it might not be quite the same song. And so that's interesting in and of itself. But just, again, taking the song down to its component parts and really looking at how it works. Yeah, because, I mean, it always amazed me that Elton John was able to do what he did because Bernie Toppin would actually uh, write the, the lyrics and then Elton would put the music to it. And it was like two different people, you know. And having someone to kind of do it from the first all the way through, that takes a lot of skill. Oh yeah, I mean, again, that's a skill I wish I had. Oh, I do too. <laughs> uh, educational programming, you all deal with a lot of that because you want kids and, and young adults to understand what is going on and, oh, yeah. and where this came from. And older adults. And you know, older a lot adults. of our programming I, is. I need the education as you well. You know, a, a lot of what we do, I mean, from what's going on in the museum to what's happening on our radio mm -hmm. station to some of the stuff that goes on at Rhythm and Roots, all of that is giving people a grounding in this music and this history. And that interest is what makes them want to dig deeper, to, you know, come to the museum and learn more or to listen to a specific part of the radio station because they talk about that kind of music or or even you know we've started a blog recently on our website where we're digging deeper into that content just ways for people who are interested or even who they don't know yet that they're interested they'll find something there that makes them want to to know more and to explore that content deeper you know we were talking about funding and and how you all are able to uh, fund the museum but you get a lot of support from corporate America as well. Well, we get we get a lot of support locally, especially. I mean, you know, for instance, the, the Things Come Apart exhibit, that's a special exhibit that came in for three months from the Smithsonian Institution Traveling Exhibition Service. It's traveling all over the country mm -hmm. to different venues. And part of the reason why we were able to have that exhibit is that we had some local partners in Eastman and Strongwell who, who helped support us to have this exhibit here. Um, but we also, you know, we get a lot of individual support. We get we get support from so many different people and we're so grateful for that. I mean, for instance, last year we, um, 
we started asking people to help support school groups coming to the museum. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people gave money to help pay for buses, because for schools that's sometimes a big expense that they struggle with. Absolutely. And they want to come because they, they know that they're going to learn something, it's going to be a great experience mm -hmm. for the kids, but it's, it's something that they struggle to do. And so we had a lot of people who stepped up for that, which was wonderful to see. So we're just very grateful that we have so many people within the community who who think what we're doing is worthwhile. Now, is there a way for people that uh, would like to support and, and, and help you all to, to be able to do that? Of course, I mean, I, I would say to get in touch with us either via our website or call, call the office to talk to the right person. Um, it's 423-573-1927 and, and someone there would be more than happy to help with anyone who's interested in what we're doing. Absolutely, and uh, do you have volunteers that help as well? Yes, we are very fortunate and um, we have regular volunteer training sessions throughout the year, usually about four times a year, quarterly. And we are so fortunate because we have a wonderful core of volunteers who come in, do ga act as gallery assistants or docents with tours. They help us in the museum store. They come out for our events and help with those. They help behind the scenes. Like I'll have someone, some volunteers who are helping me to set up exhibits or um, our collections manager will have them in the archive. So, Without our volunteers, we couldn't do the work that we do. And that's also true of the radio station and the festival, which of course is a huge volunteer-led event. Absolutely. Well, it's been a real pleasure talking to you today, Renee, and learning so much about what goes on at the birthplace of Country Music Museum in Bristol. If you've not had a chance to go out there, you need to do so and support these folks because they're doing a really good job at bringing all this information to you all. Again, thank you so much. Thank you.